Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Nacho Problems, where we turn ordinary recipes into extraordinary nachos. I'm Nacho Queen, but you can call me M. After last week's unscheduled pit stop, you'll be happy to learn that we are back on course for our Nacho World Tour. We're in the Mediterranean this week, but don't worry, we're not picking on Italy again. No, this week we're making full madamas nachos. I think I pronounced that right. Full madamas is an Egyptian dish and is basically a fava bean stew that's often eaten for breakfast. The fava beans, which are the main ingredient, proved oddly difficult to find in my town, but I managed to order some online, so we're ready to get started. Step one, the chips. For our chips, we'll be making a basic flatbread, similar to a pita, and for that we need about three cups all-purpose flour, divided. To make this a little more authentic, I should have used whole wheat, so we might try that next time. Half a teaspoon sugar, two teaspoons yeast, one teaspoon salt, two tablespoons olive oil, plus a little extra to coach your bowl, and one cup lukewarm water. Start by adding the warm water, yeast, and sugar to a large mixing bowl and stir well. Now mix in half a cup of the flour. Next, place your bowl in a warm spot for about 15 minutes. The oven with just the light on is usually a good place. After 15 minutes, add in the oil, another two cups of flour, and the salt, and mix until it's mostly come together. Now we're gonna sprinkle it with a little of our remaining flour and knead it in the bowl, scraping up all the loose bits of dough together. It's starting to look a little more like dough. Okay, now we're gonna dust our counter with some flour and knead the dough for another few minutes until you have a nice, smooth ball. Then, clean up the bowl you were using and cover it in a thin coating of oil. Place your dough in the bowl and roll it around a bit to coat it in some of the oil as well. Next, we're going to cover it in plastic wrap and then a tea towel, and then it's back into the oven to rise for about one hour. Once risen, we need to turn our dough out onto the counter and punch it down to remove the excess air. This part can be very therapeutic. Next, we're gonna divide our dough into eight slices for normal size pita or 16 to 24 for mini pitas. I made both. Roll each piece into a ball and then cover them and let them rest for another 10 minutes. While they rest, you wanna get your pan heating up. I'm cooking mine in the oven on a cast iron griddle, but a plain baking sheet will work as well. Place the pan in the oven and preheat to 475 degrees Fahrenheit or 245 degrees Celsius. Okay, now we need to roll out our pitas. Coat your rolling pin with just a bit of flour and then roll them out into something vaguely resembling a circle. Okay, not my best work, but. Then we're gonna place the dough down onto the hot pan and close the oven. Cook for about two minutes before turning and allowing to cook for another two minutes. Next, I tried some mini ones and they turned out pretty nice. It is very important to let your oven get back up to temperature in between each batch. Otherwise, they don't puff up like they should. Once these were cool, I toasted them the way we did for the shawarma nachos, and that was our chips. Let's move on to... Step two, the cheese. The full madamas will be our cheese, and for that we need two cans fava beans, one teaspoon salt, one teaspoon cumin, some hot peppers. I used jalapeno because that's what I had on hand. Two garlic cloves, one tablespoon lemon juice, and about half a cup of water. I know there's also a tomato, some olive oil, and parsley here, but they ended up being more toppings than cheese, so ignore them for now. Start by adding the fava beans to a sauce pot. Use a larger pot than I did. It took forever to clean the stove after this. Next, add in the water and bring to a boil. While that cooks, I'm gonna mix up the peppers and garlic. I recommend you do this in a blender or mini food processor. It was a lot of work trying to grind them up by hand. But basically what we want to do is grind up our peppers and our garlic together. Once they're mostly pulverized, add in the lemon juice and give it one last grind and then set aside. Now back to the beans. I'm going to add in the cumin and salt and stir until they're completely incorporated. Then we're gonna partially mash this. Now you could use an immersion blender if you want yours a nice smooth texture. However, if you want to leave the beans whole, I'd decrease the water a bit. I'm just gonna do a rough mash to make them more cheesish. Then leave them to cook for another five minutes just to thicken up some and make a mess of my stove. And that's our cheese. Next up is 
Step three, the toppings. For our toppings, we need that leftover tomato, olive oil, and parsley that I thought we were gonna use for the cheese, and also some chopped cucumber and green onion. You could also use a hard boiled egg and possibly some feta. Now, let's get down to business in. Step four, let's eat. We'll start with some of our toasted pita chips. I will say the mini ones are cute, but much harder to cut open than the big ones. Now, add some of those lovely fava beans. Dab on some of the garlic pepper puree. Now, apparently you're supposed to add a drizzle of olive oil. Next, let's add some of the cucumbers, tomatoes, and green onion, and finish with a sprinkle of parsley. Let's see who our taste tester is. The wheel spins and lands on... Cameraman. He said this was pretty good. He felt it was a lot like refried beans, which may or may not be a good thing. To be honest, none of us had ever tried fava beans before, but we've heard that they go well with some liver and a nice Chianti. Overall, the dish was a success. Maybe not one we'll make often, but probably at least one more time since I had to buy a four pack of the beans. Well, that's all for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, give it a like and please consider subscribing if you want to see more nacho videos. If you have an idea for a future video, you can leave a comment below or tag me on the site previously known as Twitter. I'm at NachoProblemsYT. I've also linked my blue sky below, but you won't find me on Facebook, Instagram, or threads. If you're looking to steal my apron, well, that's nacho merch, but you can get your own at a link in the description. Now, I'm off to Google how to ward off curses, just in case I've angered any of the ancient Egyptian gods with this dish. But that's not your problem. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.